Hi friends, Mindy here. Today I'm going to be setting up my journal for Famous Last Words from By the Will for God. And I'm kind of going to make a journal that's similar, kind of a cross between these two journals. So the first one is just a traveler's notebook that I turned into a junk journal. And the second one is a journal that I made everything by hand using some heavy mixed media paper. So I'm kind of combining the two ideas here and I'm going to make this journal. So I'm taking one of the By the Will for God Traveler's Notebooks and I'm just going to take it apart. So I'm using a little uh, Wear Memory Keepers like pokey tool and I'm just going to remove the staples here on the inside of the spine and just open up the staples and pull them out. This is what I do because I don't have a staple remover. So um, this is this works just as well. So I'm just pulling the staples out. And then what I'm going to do is take the cover off and I'm going to split the cover because I need to um, make a spine. I want it to have a little bit more room than when I do this with just using the traveler's notebook together. They kind of get rounded and stuff but with a lot of bulk by the end. And so I'm trying, gonna do this to try to make it just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just taking, um, my Tim Holtz ruler that's got the steel side and an X-Acto knife and I'm just making a cut down here to split the cover and that will give me the room for the spine and I'm going to use this fabric as a kind of wrap that will wrap from the front cover to the back and that's the fabric that you could get to coordinate with the kit this time but you could use any fabric you have or even duct tape um, I've seen spines be done with that, so or book cloth or, or whatever, but this is just what I'm using for today. So I have an old cereal box here. Um, I got into my kids' cereal so that I would have this perfect weight chipboard for little journals like this. So I'm just measuring, uh, it's about an inch and a half for the spine that I want for this journal. I think that'll give me pr plenty of room to allow the journal to expand with everything so I'm just making a line and measuring everything out just double checking to make sure that my ruler was straight and then just using my exacto knife I'm going to cut out this chipboard so that I have the spine that's roughly an inch and a half wide and then it's about an eight and a quarter inches I think tall about the, the same height as the traveler's notebook so this is how this will fit together and I'm just taking this fabric and kind of deciding how much of the fabric I want to wrap around on the front and the back cover. I ended up cutting the fabric to four inches, which will leave three quarters of an inch or so on the front and the back. And I'm just using a rotary cutter here and my um, ruler just to try to get a really straight cut. You can see I already drew the line. And I'm, I have this self-healing mat. This is super old from Creative Memories, I think was the name of the company. And I, I use it all the time. It's great because it has a grid on it. So you can really line things up very easily with it. So I use it a lot. Um, I've had it for probably 20 years, but it works great. So I'm just using a rotary cutter to cut that fabric. And then off camera, what I did is I ironed some heat and bond is um, what I use, they are also a product called Wonder Under that you can use. And you basically just iron it onto the fabric and then onto the backside. And then you, when you're getting ready to adhere it to the final thing, you take off the little paper backing that you can kind of see that white part. You peel that off and then you iron it. And then, so I'm going to actually be ironing on the covers of my journal here and it will just make everything adhere together. So I'm gonna do that on the outside of the cover and then I'll do it on the inside piece as well to cover the spine. So you can see, this is how when I go to iron it down, I'll set it up and just leave a little bit of space just ever so slightly um, between the spine piece and the cover. A general rule of thumb for that is that you want that space to be roughly the same width as the chipboard that you're using. So in this instance, because I was using the cover from the journal, it wasn't super thick. So this is what it looks like after I have ironed all of the pieces together on the, both the outside and on the inside. And you can see I'm showing here, I did not get this perfectly straight. Um, 
I do things imperfectly sometimes. So I will do something to kind of cover that up later. But for now, um, it just is what it is. So anyway, now I'm taking the papers that were inside of the traveler's notebook and I'm going to make my two signatures. And what I'm doing here is I'm pulling every other page out. I know this seems kind of strange to do this, but whenever you have papers that are cut like in a journal, the inner pages are ever so slightly shorter than the outer pages. And so I was kind of mixing them up so that they would still be nice and flush um, and roughly the same size. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, if, if you do it, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just keeps everything nice and even. And now I'm going through the pattern papers. These are the six by eight pattern papers that you can get to coordinate with the kit. And what I'm looking for here are papers that I can take and fold lengthwise to make like little tip-ins or extra journaling spaces in my journal. But it, the how you fold it depends on the pattern. And so I'm looking for patterns that I can turn the paper either way and it will be fine. So like for instance, these two right here, they'll, they will flip no problem. I can turn them sideways, but this one, because of the lines on the back, needs to stay in that six, you know, that vertical format. So I'll have to use that in a different way. So right now I have these two signatures and I'm just going to fold some of these papers and I'm just deciding where I want them or what, however. So I'm gonna fold this and then I'm gonna tuck it in between these white pages and just give some interest and something else to work on. Just kind of creating a junk journal style traveler's notebook. So here I'm using this um, floral paper that has like the mulberry paper look on the inside so neither of those are very specific with the orientation of the pattern so I can um, fold them however I want to so that is going to be the first signature like I said I'm making two signatures just to kind of help with with the bulk and this one I decided to go ahead and do lengthwise and it'll it'll make a really um, short page but it'll be something that I can add as a tip in or add an extra page to or create a pocket um, I'll have a lot of versatility with it but it, it won't necessarily function as a full page because it's just not quite that long or quite that wide anyway so again I'm just going through here and this I decided to fold the opposite direction of the other one it's the same um, pattern paper as in the first signature and then I'm just gonna tuck that in here. And then one of the other things that I really like to add to junk journals when I'm doing them are glassine envelopes or craft envelopes or just little pockets. And so I pulled out a collection that I have been getting through through the months here. Um, you know, I save my packaging and stuff when things come, and especially when things come in glassine envelopes, I save them. And so I think what I'm going to do, I also found this really great envelope that is like vellum it's, and it has a really neat closure. So I'll probably be adding that somewhere in my journal. I'm not quite sure yet, but what I'm looking for are some envelopes that are long enough that I can fold them in half and make little tuck spots. So I have these pieces of glassine envelopes and then this craft one, and I'm going to use a couple of these. And here I'm folding this up just to where the opening is um, because I'm not sure if I want to cut that edge off or if I'm gonna flap you know kind of close it over like a flap where I can you know hold a, a prayer or something in there so I'm just I'm gonna leave that until I kind of decide how I want to do that and you'll see here I'm kind of just moving pages around trying to decide how I want to do it at this point I think I'm gonna tuck those kind of inside each other. I end up changing that later, but that's just part of my process. It's why I wait till the very, very end when I'm sure to sew everything in. So I know I want to use this big glassine envelope, but it's actually a little bit longer than what I need. So I am just measuring it here roughly. And I can tell it's gonna to be too long, even you know if I folded it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna fold it even with the opening and I'm just gonna trim that off. And then when I go to use the journal, I will either open up the side or the top of the envelope, um, kind of just depending on, on how I want to use it. So 
like right here, this side will is obviously sealed on all three sides. So I'll have to open up one side or the other at some point, but I'll do that as I'm working through the journal. I hope that made sense. But anyway, this is how my little signatures are gonna look inside the cover. I very often can kind of keep working back and forth. And so now I'm going through here and I'm trying to decide how I want these two pieces because they're right next to each other. And I thought maybe they would look good if they were offset like this. So I'm putting them through there and then I'm just flipping through the signature. And then I realized I actually had an extra page here. So I was decided that I would just go ahead and pull the envelope out and then stick it in there. So it's kind of every other page has a little something on the inside. And then this is moving into the second signature, just double checking how everything is lining up. And I, I got to the center and I realized I didn't really like that green page um, being in there. I was actually thinking about adding that page right now, but I think I'm going to wait. But right here, I decided I, I just didn't really want that in the very center of that signature. Um, so I just went back to another page where I could just kind of tuck it in. And then that is how everything is going to kind of look. I, I go through and I flip through them several times just to make sure I have it the way that I want it before I actually go through this next process, which is where I'm going to start punching the holes to do... Um, the binding. So I just pulled out a couple clips here to keep everything straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm making sure everything is tucked in really neatly. And I'm just going to take a pencil and a ruler and you could make a template and do this in a much more formal way. But for me, for what I'm doing today, I'm just writing on the edge of the page. I'm just drawing a little line I started at about center and then basically an inch from the top and bottom. And I made a mark on both of my signatures so that I'll know where to punch the holes. And now I am making some lines on the inside spine accordingly, length lengthwise. And then I'm going to match up the traveler's notebook, the signature part with these holes. And I'm just making a little line and then I'll, I'll punch holes in all of those places. So. What I'm doing here is I need to make sure that when I punch these holes that these half pieces of paper like the envelopes and the half sheets are going to be bound between two of the holes. So I'm going to be using a three hole pamphlet stitch and just to make sure everything is really secure you want to make sure that it at least two of the holes get through anything that you're adding in otherwise it just kind of flops around. And so just make, moving things up and down just to make sure that it was going to when I punch the holes I'd be getting two two holes in each page so here i'm just going through and punching the holes in the cover with i should have used my heavy duty all for this because it was having trouble going through the chipboard a little bit and i actually end up struggling with this quite a lot because i did not make the holes big enough for the needle and the thread that i was using so here i am measuring out some waxed linen thread and when you're doing a three hole pamphlet stitch, which is what I'll be doing, you want your thread to be roughly two and a half times the length of the page that you're sewing in. So you end up with some excess. I think I actually did a little bit more than, than two and a half on this first one, but I, I don't know why I was just struggling getting this book bound together. So I left some of the struggle in so you could just kind of see, um, but like here, um, my signature fell apart, so I had to like realign everything and take the needle through each of the holes individually. It just made it a little bit more time consuming. And it's hard to see, I got off camera here a little bit, but I am struggling to get this needle um, through all of these layers and especially that cover. This waxed linen thread actually um, is really nice it's supposed to glide through but I just I did not make the holes big enough so you can see here I'm like literally I mean just struggling I could not I could not grasp the needle and so I ended up having to pull out some pliers so that I could grab the needle so I could pull it through the hole it was just it was a little bit of a struggle <laughs> this time and and that happens sometimes so now I'm coming I went from the inside to the outside of the cover and now I'm coming back through the top hole and you'll see me struggling I pull the pliers again so I'm up in through the top 
And then, so now I'm on the inside of the book and I'm gonna go back out to the outside through that bottom hole. And again, you can see, I was just having trouble keeping everything together for some reason. I don't normally have this problem, but I was just, I was just struggling this time. So anyway, now I'm back through to the outside. And again, I'm having to use the pliers to pull this through. And one of the things, if you've watched any of my videos like this before, that I, I say is to be really careful when you're going back through this center hole. So you're going back through that center and into the middle. And I am always very adamant to be careful about splitting your thread, which is exactly what I did in this video. So, um, and the reason is because once, if you split the thread like this, um, I'm trying to just get the needle through here and I didn't even realize that I had done it at this point until I'm trying, you can see I'm trying to pull it tight and you just cannot get it as tight as it needs to be. You can see all that wiggle room on the inside and so I'm trying to move this thread through here. I'm just kind of adjusting it but like I said I have, I've split that thread and so I'm having trouble. So right here I'm just taking my needle and going back through where I, where I kind of split the thread and going back through and kind of working my way out of it so that now I have the threads that I can pull on either side. So now they're separate and now I can pull it tight and get the right tightness on my signature here. So I don't, you know, don't do it this way because it just makes more problems. So just be careful and don't split the threads. Just trust me, it makes it much easier on, on you. So I wasn't sure at this point how long I wanted to leave those threads. So I'm just going to sew in that second signature. It won't make you watch me struggle through that one. But um, I just, I sewed the second signature in the same way. You can see I pulled out my other awl here to make these holes in the cover a little bit bigger. So I won't have that same struggle. But anyway, off camera also, I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. I found some lace that matched that teal perfectly. And so I just glued that on the front cover to cover up that area where you could, where it got a little bit crooked and you can't really tell. So, and now I'm just, um, cutting those, trimming those inside threads. I usually trim them to at least the, about the length of the full thread, and then you can kind of tuck them in or you can add things to them or you can tie them in a bow. But for right now, I'm just going to leave them as they are. And this is what my little book looks like now. And I was thinking about adding these papers back in as kind of signatures or tip-ins or whatever, which is a lot of times how I work with these journals when I create them this way, but I really wanted to give myself some extra space this time, so I decided not to do that this time. I'll do that as I'm working through. So anyway, if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and until next time, bye-bye.